G'day, it's Bill here from Sidereal Trading. Uh, it's a bit noisy in the factory today, but we'll do what we can. One of the most popular forms of astrophotography is the wide field image, which is done by a camera lens. Now, you can make it more interesting by putting a tree or a car or something like that in the foreground, but it's massively popular. Now, I've tried this on a number of occasions and I've never really been happy with my images. Um, and the reason is, well, I'm a pixel peeper and you've got to zoom in and see all of those problems. The first problem is focus. Focusing on these things is very, very difficult. If you zoom all the way in, you'll see that your stars, particularly the, the small ones, are fuzzy and a bit feathery and sometimes not round. They look, just look bad, they're out of focus. The second problem is noise. If you look between the stars, uh, it, right up close, you'll see that there's all sorts of unevenness and blotchiness and dots behind it. That's ISO noise or noise that's come from having a, 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 a warm sensor. It's extremely common and it's very hard to get around. The answer, you need a gadget. Wide-field astrophotography is great. It means that you can relate what you see in the image to what you see in the sky. If you use a telescope to take a photograph of something very, very small, it's so magnified that you can't see with your eye what the telescope can see. And that means that there's a disconnect there. Not so with a camera lens. Take a photograph of one of these and the magnification is low enough so that you can make the, make the relationship between what you see in the sky and what you see in the image. So you can see some stars here and you can make those same stars out there. And you can understand what you can see. Now, because the camera lens is that much more sensitive and it can, you can have a longer exposure, you can see a lot more in those images, but you can still see those stars, which means that the relationship is still there and you can understand what's hiding in the dark. That's a great way of showing newcomers what's up in the sky, hiding from them. Now, so what I've got here is a, a, a sky tracker with a DSLR and a 50 millimeter lens on it. Now the sky tracker will continue to move this, the, the whole arrangement so that it tracks the stars. That means I can get one, two minutes of, uh, of exposure with, with a camera, longer if I'm good with the polar alignment. That'll give me something like 15 by 25 degrees of field of view, which is very, very wide. But now we come to the problems. Have a look at the dark areas. You can see the speckles, that's the ISO noise. The focus is wrong too. You can see with the smallest stars that they're badly out of focus. I think what it really means is that manual focusing a lens like this is the hard. It's very difficult. So what do we do? The first thing we do, we can do is use an astro cam. This is an ASI 071 MC Pro, and it's got a little refrigerator in it. It's a little chiller, which keeps the sensor and the electronics cool, which means that the heat doesn't build up and give that speckles over your, uh, over your image. I'm not really talking about the Astro Cam today. What we're really interested in is the lens. Now, how do we get this lens onto the Astro Cam? Standard lens. The answer is we use an adapter. Actually, two adapters. Now there are lots of adapters around, um, made by different companies, uh, but essentially all they do is keep the lens the, the right distance from the, uh, the sensor on the, on the camera. It's probably about that much. Uh, Canon lenses have, uh, they, they make the assumption of I think 44 millimeters of back focus, and so you have to get it the right distance from that, app, uh, that sensor. So here we have the adapter. It's an Astro Mechanics Canon lens controller, and it has a USB port. With its ASCOM driver, we can use it to drive astrophotography uh, capture programs like, uh, like Sequence Generator Pro, Nina, Voyager, and the like. This is essentially the front part of a Canon lens. It has the same bayonet arrangement, meaning the, cam uh, the, the camera lens can just go, in, as long as I get the thing right, the Canon lens can just go straight in there. The next thing is we need to get this adapter to make it go onto there, uh, and I'll screw that on in a second. Okay, here it is all set up. Um, now, I've got a USB connector going from the adapter to my, uh, to my laptop. I've also got the USB going from the Astro Cam to the laptop so that it can drive my, uh, my SGP. Uh, I haven't plugged in the, the camera yet because the noisy fan is a bit noisy. 
So all I need to do is, uh, now is make sure everything's all powered up and connected, uh, fire up SGP, uh, and then just connect to the camera and to the adapter, and I'm pretty much set to go. Once I'm connected, I can change the aperture and I can change the focus on the camera. So from the computer, I can manually change focus using the relevant panel on SGP. There's also a little program you can download for Windows. With autofocus, your computer starts nearly in focus, pushes the focus out, and then starts reading the size of the stars all the way back through the focus point and back out the other side. It'll see the focus point, uh, the, the, the size of the stars go from large to small, back to large again, and that's the way you get this, this thing called a V-curve. The bottom of the V-curve, that's your focus point. Once you've got this working, you can organize it to autofocus every half hour, every filter change, every degree of change in temperature, or every time you change the target. It's, there's a number of different things you can do. Um, and that's basically it. Here's a couple of shots I've taken. They'll sit in front of me. This is the Large Magellanic Cloud, and it was taken under pretty windy conditions. The wide angle lens and the low profile of the rig helped a lot there. The chilled camera lowers the noise and the autofocus means I can look close and still get small stars. This one I took on the same weekend. It's the Southern Cross and Pointers, because we're in the Southern Hemisphere. The same deal here, low noise and good focus. So there you have it. I might just have taken my last disappointing wide field shot. It just takes low noise and autofocus. Okay, as usual, if you like this video, subscribe to the Sidereal Trading YouTube channel. Like, rate, comment, we love comments. That's about it. My name's Bill Sten, and I'll see you next time. You're recording?